Hello and welcome back to our module tour series on the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And my name is Alan Biermacher from Digital Drafting Systems. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the design collaboration module. So picking up where we left off in the last video here at the end of our docs section, we're going to use our module selector to select design collaboration. So this design collaboration piece is really meant to help facilitate uh, the connection amongst uh, the collaborating uh, disciplines or groups on a project. So as we jump in here, we'll see a whole bunch of things here on the left side. The first thing I'm going to point out on this specific uh, video is actually down in the settings area. So down here we have a whole bunch of settings. We have project settings, which we've already seen before. We have our shared folder. So when you come in here, this is the first thing it's going to ask you to set up actually in a new project is where your shared folder is going to be. And so the reason you need that shared folder, and you may not need it if you're going to be live linking, but I'll explain those in uh, in just a little bit of time here with a little bit more detail. But that's basically going to be the folder location where uh, project files will be copied when you're sharing them with your collaborators and where they can link from. So typically that's going to be this project files slash shared location. And so that is where we suggest keeping it. Now, as far as team setup goes, this again is part of what's necessary for that collaboration piece and automation. And we're going to, again, be discussing the three collaboration or linking methodologies that can be used. This project team setup is needed for two of those, the two controlled methods. So in order to basically do this, and we'll just go ahead and add a third team here, we're going to go ahead and type in MEP, and we'll go ahead and click Add. And so this is going to go ahead and create the MEP team for us. And so you can go ahead and change the color here if you'd like to. You don't have to. You can uh, change the name here with the pencil. And over here under members, if you click on the number, this is actually where you're going to go ahead and add members. And remember, we discussed this a little bit when I was telling you about the permission. So let's say here we needed to add Jaime to this group. So we're going to go ahead and type his name. We're going to give him edit access to this group's uh, folder. Oh, then I forgot to actually click add so let's do that one more time edit and then we need to click add over here once we see him here on this list at the bottom this does sometimes take a couple of seconds so let's give that a moment and once this is here we can go ahead and close and so now you'll see the number of members here has jumped to three total and so let's jump back to the docs section for a moment and i'll show you a little bit about what that means so now you'll see we have an MEP folder as well. This is that shared folder that I was mentioning to you. So very briefly, we basically have three ways that we can link amongst fold, amongst um, basically different groups here. So the first is what's called live linking. In that case, let's say we put on our architectural hat. We are the architect now. We're coming in here. Um, we would need visibility to everybody else's folder folder you know that they're actually working in and so as the architect when I link to the structural model I'm gonna link directly from this model in the structural folder now there's good and bad things with that but basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna see those changes basically live as the structural group is working on their model you may not want that both because you may not want to be consuming those latest changes as they're still in progress because things may change and then you're gonna be maybe caught off guard or um, you may not, or they may not want to be you to be seeing those changes for the same reason, right? They're not done. They're still thinking. They're still, re, you know, maybe reworking a little bit. So it can sometimes be a little bit confusing. Additionally, if you're in a situation where you're collaborating with somebody maybe who is outside your company, something along those lines, you may not want them to see what you're working on. You may not want them directly to have visibility to be able to grab your stuff there. So in that case, you can use one of the more controlled linking methods. And so in that next level methodology, which is called the shared linking method, we're going to actually be using this shared folder. And in the shared folder, you'll see we have a folder for each discipline. And there's a copy of that same model that was in the architectural folder here. How does that work? So let's go back to our design collaboration section here, and we can discuss a little bit further. So if we go to our home area here, 
and we click on these three dots here, this will open what's called our swim lanes. And if we click on this line down here, or this uh, arrow down here, it'll actually open it further so we can see all of our disciplines. So as an admin, I can actually click into these different um, groups and I can emulate them, right? Right now I'm wearing my architectural hat, but if I needed to, I could be the structural temporarily, something like that. Typically, whoever is coming in here should be manipulating their own timeline and will only have access to unless uh, they're an admin, in which case, again, they have a little bit more access. So what can we do here? We can go ahead and create a shared package. Before we create a shared package, it's important to think about, um, what you're sharing is going to be the latest published model from Revit. And so like we talked about, the Revit work in progress models that you're synchronizing live kind of off here to the right. And what we're seeing here on the web browser is, let's say, off here to the left. So in order to see those latest changes in the uh, construction cloud, you need to publish that model. And then whatever you're sharing in your share package is the latest publish. So for example, uh, we just published a couple times in the previous section, right? Because we were looking at docs and we needed to add those sheets that we wanted visibility to. So we've already recently published. So I'm not going to go ahead and publish again, which you do from Revit typically, but you can also actually publish from here, which is nice. Additionally, you can schedule publishes, which we see sometimes done, um, you know, typically on a weekly basis. And, um, you know, so it's an important thing to be able to do. Uh, I'm not having access here. That's all right. But basically, you would enable this right here. You would set, um, I think you can do either weekly or monthly here. And then you would set a day and a time. So let's say Sunday at uh, midnight here. And then you'd be able to turn this on. So you, have, I'm sorry, you actually have to set this before anything else. As far as the uh, weekly, looks like that's the only option. So we'll leave it like that for now. And you can see here that Sundays at midnight, it's now going to publish. So that's a nice thing if you wanted to on a weekly basis force a publish to happen for your collaborators. It, you know, it, it's helpful. So now again to the, you know, wearing our architectural hat. So we've recently published, but we haven't yet shared those latest changes with our collaborators. So here's what we're going to do. We are here as the architect. We're going to check down these swim lanes, which are basically timelines. And we're going to click down here where it says share or create package. I'm sorry. And so on the left side here, we're going to have uh, our, our sets. So this is actually the set that I enabled at in uh, Revit to show us some of those um, 2D views that we talked about. You're going to have your model. You're going to have your documents. Wherever you enable this, it'll do the same thing. So if I enable this here, it'll actually enable the model as well. And so we're going to click Save down here. You could see there there's actually a live uh, sample of your latest version. And then up here, you're going to have a Share button. So let's click share. And so when we do that, what's happening is my latest published model in my architecture folder that we just talked about is now going to be recopied and overwrite that version that was in the shared folder. So let's go back to the shared folder, architectural. And you see here now we're seeing a version 2 and 4.02 p.m. It's now 4.02 p.m. So we know that's from, from right now. And it just makes a latest copy. And so in that case, you'd want your collaborators to be linking from the shared folder location. Okay. Um, so that gives you a little more control in the sense that the person or the group, I'm sorry, creating those changes has a say in when the other groups see the changes. But there's one more level of control there. So let's say now as the structural, I say, okay, you know, great. I'm seeing those changes, but I really don't want to see new changes until I'm ready to see them. So how do we handle that? So again, we've done what we've done so far. That part was all necessary to get to where we're going now. So after the architect shares, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in my MEP hat, right? So, or my structural hat. So again, I click structural. It says structural here. That's how you know what team you're in. And so you can see here, oh, look, architectural has shared a package. Empty circle means it's there. It's in the shared folder, but I have not chosen to consume it yet. So if we click on it, you can actually see the set here. If you click on the set, it will actually preview the set. And then when you're ready, you can click consume up here. Consume. 
And so what that's going to do is it's going to copy that file one more time, but to a slightly different location. So let's go back to Docs. And I'm going to go into my own structural folder. In the Consume folder, I now have an architectural folder. And here I also had already a version, and so this just dropped the version 2 in here, another copy. And so in this case, as the structural, I would link in through my own Consume folder because I decide when I'm going to see those changes. Hopefully that makes some sense. I know it's not the easiest thing to wrap your head around. It took me quite a while to, to kind of understand that. And I still have some questions sometimes. But essentially, you have a lot of options in terms of how you want to be linking and what level of security and permissions you want to have set up. So those are some of the most important parts here. The issues area is going to be very similar to what we've seen in the past. You can see your open issues. Um, you know, project status, you have some details here, when the publishes have occurred, where those models are, things of that nature. Uh, changes, meetings, correspondence, reports. Again, I'm not going to get into too much detail. I don't see those used all that much. Reports can be used for creating certain reports. You can have templates. should be some existing templates, but you can create report templates as well. Um, Again, members is what we know it to be, and bridge we've already kind of looked at previously. So a lot of these categories you see are really just reflections from, from other sections, but they work pretty much just the same. So that pretty much concludes the design collaboration section here. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. And then if you would join us for our next video, we're going to go ahead and look into the model coordination section as well, and we'll go over that. Okay, thank you all for being here. Have a good one.